proves it's a witch. Of course not. Witches have proves. It's Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins is a children's chapter book by P. L. Travers and illustrated by Mary Shepherd. It was first published in 1934, although it was revised in 1967 and 1981. I'll talk about that later. Mary Poppins is a children's chapter book by P. L. Travers and illustrated by Mary Shepherd. It was first published in 1934. Mary Poppins is about the Banks family from number 17 Cherry Tree Lane, London. They are Mr. and Mrs. Banks, their children Jane and Michael, and the babies John and Barbara. The book is mostly about Jane and Michael, who never seem to go to school. Maybe there was another coronavirus pandemic. Anyway, one day Mary Poppins arrives at number 17, flying with her umbrella on the east wind. She is strict and bad-tempered, but also magical, as she takes the children on many strange and wonderful adventures. I grew up watching the movie from 1967 of Mary Poppins, but I'd never actually read the book until this year. It is a little bit old fashioned. It's kind of funny to think about a household with a cook and a gardener and a maid and a nanny, and the children seem to spend all day, every day in the nursery. But the adventurous stories are still very exciting and it's easy to understand even for us, almost a hundred years later. The original book had some unkind and unfair descriptions of people from other countries. These descriptions were changed by P. L. Travers in 1967, and they were completely removed in 1981, and the characters were replaced with animals from different countries. There are lots of other Mary Poppins books, and this uh, box set from HarperCollins has got another four books. And each of them has little bits of information about P.L. Travers, Mary Shepherd, the characters from the books, some interesting facts, and even some recipes in the back of this one. So it's a really nice set. Now, let's have an extract. Mary Poppins continued to regard the four children searchingly. Then, with a long, loud sniff that seemed to indicate she had made up her mind, she said, I'll take the position. For all the world, as Mrs. Banks said to her husband later, as though she was doing us a signal honour. Perhaps she is, said Mr. Banks, putting his nose round the corner of the newspaper for a moment and then withdrawing it very quickly. When their mother had gone, Jane and Michael edged towards Mary Poppins, who stood still as a post, with her hands folded in front of her. "'How did you come?' Jane asked. "'It looked just as if the wind blew you here.' "'It did,' said Mary Poppins briefly, and she proceeded to unwind her muffler from her neck and to take off her hat, which she hung on one of the bedposts. As it did not seem as though Mary Poppins was going to say any more, though she sniffed a great deal, Jane too remained silent. But when she bent down to undo her bag, Michael could not restrain himself. "'What a funny bag!' he said, pinching it with his fingers. "'Carpet,' said Mary Poppins, putting her key in the lock. "'To carry carpets in, you mean?' "'No, made of.' "'Oh!' said Michael. I see. But he didn't. Quite. By this time the bag was open and Jane and Michael were more than surprised to find it was completely empty. Why, said Jane, there's nothing in it. What do you mean nothing? 
demanded Mary Poppins, drawing herself up and looking as though she had been insulted. Nothing in it, did you say? And with that, she took out from the empty bag a starched white apron and tied it around her waist. Next, she unpacked a large cake of sunlight soap, a toothbrush, a packet of hairpins, a bottle of scent, a small folding armchair, and a box of throat lozenges. Jane and Michael stared. But I saw, whispered Michael, I'm sure it was empty. Hush, said Jane, as Mary Poppins took out a large bottle labelled one teaspoon to be taken at bedtime. A spoon was attached to the neck of the bottle, and into this Mary Poppins poured a dark crimson fluid. "'Is that your medicine?' inquired Michael, looking very interested. "'No, yours,' said Mary Poppins, holding out the spoon to him. Michael stared. He wrinkled up his nose. He began to protest. "'I don't want it. I don't need it. I won't!' But Mary Poppins' eyes were fixed upon him, and Michael suddenly discovered that you could not look at Mary Poppins and disobey her. There was something strange and extraordinary about her, something that was frightening, and at the same time, most exciting. The spoon came nearer. He held his breath, shut his eyes, and gulped. A delicious taste ran round his mouth. He turned his tongue in it. He swallowed and a happy smile ran round his face. Strawberry ice, he said ecstatically. More, more, more! But Mary Poppins, her face as stern as before, was pouring out a dose for Jane. It ran into the spoon, silvery, greeny, yellowy. Jane tasted it. Lime juice cordial, she said, sliding her tongue deliciously over her lips. But when she saw Mary Poppins moving towards the twins with the bottle, Jane rushed at her. Oh no, please, they're too young. It wouldn't be good for them, please. Mary Poppins, however, took no notice, but with a warning, terrible glance at Jane, tipped the spoon towards John's mouth. He lapped at it eagerly, and by the few drops that were spilt on his bib, Jane and Michael could tell that the substance in the spoon this time was milk. Then Barbara had her share, and she gurgled and licked the spoon twice. Mary Poppins then poured out another dose and solemnly took it herself. Rum punch, she said, smacking her lips and corking the bottle. Jane's eyes and Michael's popped with astonishment. Mary Poppins is fairly easy to read. If you like magical adventure stories like Harry Potter or classic children's books like Peter Pan, I recommend it to you. Some of the language can be a little old-fashioned, but overall I think it's easier to read than, say, the Just William books. Mr. O approves of Mary Poppins. Mr. O approves of Mary Poppins. I don't approve of you though, boy, because you're fuzzy. Yeah. You're fuzzy. Boy, I don't approve. <laughs>